This is a CR-10S Pro. It's a $550 to $600 printer. This is an Ender 3. You can buy one of these for under $200. This has a dual gear drive to push the filament. This has a single gear drive with an idler. But did you know you can buy that dual gear drive and put it on an Ender 3? Well, we're going to try that. I'll show you how to install it, how to calibrate it, and is it even worth it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. Here's a standard extruder on an Ender 3. It's got a gear and an idler wheel, and the whole frame is made out of plastic. Here's the dual drive, a drive on both sides, an all metal frame, and actually a stronger spring. This is the one I'm going to use. I bought this off of Amazon.com. I'll put a link to it in the description below, along with links to other locations where you can get the same extruder. Here's the close-up of how it works. It grips on both sides of the filament and they're geared so they turn together. So the first thing I want to do is set a baseline. So I need to measure 100 millimeters of filament. So between these two marks is 100 millimeters. Next, I'm actually going to take off the PTFE tube because I want to try this with no resistance. No hot end, no PTFE tube, nothing. So I'm just going to push filament through. You can see the little marks and I'm going to line that up so first mark is right at the beginning and then 100 millimeters later is the second mark. In order for the machine to move any filament it has to be preheated even if we're not connected to the hot end. So I heated it up to 185 degrees C and then I go into the prepare move axis menu down to extruder select 10 millimeters crank it up to 100 and then let this thing run. And now it's been pushing the filament through you can see the dot on the left and the 100 millimeter on the right and it stops right at the 100 millimeter mark. And that's because I've got my machine tuned. If you go into control motion and steps per millimeter, you'll see the E steps. This is how many steps the stepper motor has to go to move 100 millimeters. Some of the early machines didn't have this, but all the latest Ender 3s, and if you've upgraded to the silent board, you have this on your menu. Now I'm going to screw the PTFE tube back into the extruder and then we're going to push some filament through and through the hot end. I'll measure out another 100 millimeters between the two marks and I'm actually going to push this filament until that first mark is lined up so you can see the filaments oozing out as I do it. Now I'll go to the prepare, move axis, extruder, 10 millimeters, crank up 100 millimeters again and then we're going to let this thing run and see how close we get. So here it is moving. And if I let this run out, it'll stop at some point. Now we're at 185 degrees C here. And you can see it stopped way short, like 24 millimeters short of where I would expect it to be. So let's crank this up to a higher temperature. I'm going to go to 205, which is typically what I print at with this filament and see how close we get. So let's try it again at 205. Now 100 millimeters, push it into the starting point, let it run and it stops pretty close but not perfect right there. So we're looking at about six millimeters. So clearly there's some slippage going on. As soon as we add the PTFE tube and hot end, it's slipping on the gear. But at 185 degrees C, it's like 24 millimeters of slippage and at 205, it's only six millimeters of slippage. So let's try the other extruder. So let me show you how to remove this. The first step is to take the filament out and I'm going to take the screw off of the bracket or the arm and then the spring. And then I'm going to disconnect the PTFE tubing and pull the wiring harness off the clip. And then there's a screw at the front here. Take that off and then there's one at the back corner. Take that off. You have to disconnect the motor from the wiring harness. Just pulls out. And there's one last screw that holds the motor. And now you can remove the motor and the last piece of the extruder. Here's the kit that I bought. I'll put a link to this in the description below. It is a kit, so you have to assemble it. So let me show you how this works. Eventually we'll get to this where the two pieces drive the filament on both sides and the motor turns the idler gear. The first thing I did was put the screw into the bracket. This will actually be the adjustment screw for the tension on the spring. And then there's a screw that goes into the arm and this will actually hold the spring in place. There's an insert that goes into the arm that goes in here. And there's a tall screw that goes into that insert. And then this arm will mount to the bracket like this and screw into the motor. And then the spring will go between the arm and the bracket. 
Now we've got to remove the gear from the motor. There's two set screws to take it off. The new one has one set screw, so you want to make sure that set screw goes on the flat side of the motor shaft. Now we're ready to assemble, so you bring the base of the new extruder to the machine and tighten the first screw to the motor. Then tighten the second one on the right front. Don't tighten that one all the way. And then the back one, don't quite tighten that one all the way. It gives you a little wiggle room. Next we want to adjust the gear so it lines up with the filament. Then we can bring in the arm, put that in position, and tighten it in place. Now go back and tighten those other two screws and back out the tension screw. This insert goes into the spring and then the spring pops over the screw on the arm and pops into the tension location. Then tighten the tension screw until you start to see the spring turn. Readjust the arm screw so it's tight but still loose enough to move back and forth. And we're ready to test. So I marked two spots 100 millimeters apart. I set the extruder to extrude 100 millimeters so it starts extruding. And let's see how close it gets. Not too close. It's way off, 30 millimeters. So we need to adjust the E steps. So we take the 100 millimeters we expect minus the 30 millimeters we measured, divide that into the 100 millimeters, and then times the E steps, and we get 135.57. So we need to change our E steps to 135.57. So how do you do that? You go into the control menu, and then you go into motion, and then you go into steps per millimeter at the bottom, and then you go all the way to the bottom of that. You had the E steps per millimeter, 135.56. See, I've already changed it. From there, you want to go to the control menu, store settings, click on it, and that'll save that setting. I marked another 100 millimeters. I started the extruder to extrude 100 millimeters. And here's where we're at now after the change to the E steps. You can see we're almost perfect. So we're going to go with it. Now we need to change the coupling on this guy to the big coupling that came with it and put the PTFE tube in place so now we can test it with actual filament. There's even a locking clip for it. So I marked 100 millimeters of filament. I set it to 185 degrees C. It's extruding and this is where it stopped. So if I measure this, we're 6 millimeters short of perfect. Much better than the other extruder at 185. But let's see what it does at 205. So at 205 degrees C, the filament has gone through. We're just waiting for it to stop. This is the second mark, and then we can measure. And there it stopped. And if I measure, 6 millimeters. Same thing we got at 185 degrees C. So now let's do a comparison at 185 degrees C. You can see the stock extruder slips a lot more than this double gear drive. But what about at 205? At 205, they're essentially the same. They're both stopping 6 millimeters short. That seemed to be a standard slippage, 6 millimeters short. Of what I expected but what I liked is it's the same on the metal one whether it's 205 or 185. So now we can recalculate if I use the six millimeters I can get a new e-step of 144.2. And with those new e-steps that should compensate for the slippage so here's a test that's the second mark and sure enough it stops right where I want it. So essentially zero error. As far as print quality, I'm not seeing a major difference between the dual extruder and my original extruder when I compare prints. But I'm happy with the results and now I've got consistent flow that I can trust. So maybe I can make some more improvements within the slicer settings. But right now, they're printing about equal. So is it worth it? Well, based on what I've seen, getting that consistent push no matter the temperature is a definite advantage. It gives you consistent flow and therefore smoother prints. So I think it's worth putting on the Ender 3, especially when you consider it's on a $600 printer that you can put on the sub $200 printer for not a lot of added cost. And it's metal, so it's gonna last longer than the plastic one that comes on the Ender 3. Now, having said that, I did notice some wear underneath the gear, so heavy grease under there is highly recommended. But overall, I think it's an improvement.